Welcome sixth graders. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about climate and vegetation. All right. So the first map uh, we're going to look at, and we've seen these all before. All right. And I promise this will be the last chapter where we look at maps again. Uh, but I just wanted to again show you how varied the um, the climate zones are in East Asia. All right. And so that's going to put a lot of effects on the vegetation and people, which we'll, which we'll talk about here in a moment. But just look at um, the various um, climate zones, all right? Get a good grasp picture of that and think, I want you to think about where is it, again, we know where most of the people live, but kind of put the two together in terms of climate zones and mass population, all right? We know that the majority of the population uh, in um, East Asia lies uh, in this region here, right? We know that it goes towards the ocean, okay? Um, so you keep that in mind when you, when you think of population density, physical features, uh, climate, uh, and, uh, and then if we look at the vegetation zones, all right? A lot of it has to deal with where the people live. Okay. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the effects of vegetation. All right, and then on the other side, we are going to talk about the effects on the people. Okay. So for our first point here, um, really we really need to look at the plant life. Okay, and in our plant life, um, it needs to be able to withstand seasonal differences. All right, you know, think of the plant life that we have here in South Bend. It needs to withstand hot summers, cold winters, rainy springs, dry falls, or rainy falls and dry springs. So it it. it it needs to withstand a lot of temperature variations, rainfall variations, and so on and so forth. Um, so that's what, um, so it will stay in seasonal temps. And then also temperatures and rainfall. Okay, a prime example of this is bamboo. All right. Um, also, the plants themselves, all right, um, if we look at the desert, okay, yes, there are plants in the desert. Um, they usually um, flower quickly, all right, so as soon as they get that drink of water, they're there, um, and then they disappear. All right, when it's hot and dry, okay. Um, then the other thing too is, you know, this is on your test, which doesn't need to know why you need to know it, um, but the it, it helps to know about for around here too. Uh, the deciduous trees, all right, will change with the seasons, right? We have a lot of deciduous trees around here. Um, we see them on our campus all the time, and they, they, you know, that's what they happens. And this is how it was one of the ways that they um, withstand those seasonal temperatures, okay? So how does it affect the people? Um, well, first and foremost, um, when we think about this, we need to also think about the various wind patterns, right? Um, and what wind patterns do is they usually will bring about uh, typhoons in this area, okay? Um, you know, Dr. Um, Chala was here and talked to us, and he talked about, you know, the current, the, the typhoon that hit the Philippines and, you know, devastated it, um, which when we get to that part of the topic, we'll talk more about. But so, you know, typhoons, um, you know, have brought the devastation. Sorry, my handwriting is really sloppy. All right, so devastation and death. 
Um, also, one of the major rivers, the Huang. All right, it can still overflow, killing lots of people. All right, so it overflows. It still can kill people. But more importantly, during this monsoon season, all right, it floods and it brings down the lows. All right, which is a very fertile soil. All right, um, so this type of climate that they live in uh, is also conducive to the growing of rice. All right, that's their main food, and they can also grow wheats and grains. All right, so this is how the vegetation um, and climate really affect the people of. Uh, of East Asia.